All right, everybody, welcome back. In this step, we're gonna be talking about how we as people use search engines. And really, it looks more like a bloodhound than it does like a human being. We go out and when we are in search of something, we get on the scent of something. It looks a little bit like this. We actually search until we find the asset that actually satisfies the intent and or the context that we have typed into the search engine. So let's take a look on the right here. We've got a graphic here that's got a hub. That hub could be Google, it could be Google Maps, it could be Yelp, TripAdvisor, YouTube, Pinterest, any search engine. We're gonna go to that hub, we're gonna start typing in the query that we have, we're gonna go out on a particular trail. If we ever feel like we've lost the scent of what we were looking for, we're gonna return back to that hub. We're gonna type in a new set of queries. We're gonna go back out on a new trail and we'll repeat that process until we convert. Now, that asset that, that they are searching for, that that bloodhound is, is searching a search engine for might be a blog post, it might be an infographic, a photograph, it might be a quiz, it might be a calculator, a video, a product review, a webinar, a product demo, a product detail page. So just setting the stage for this module, what you're doing is you're trying to take that bloodhound and hand them the asset that they are looking for, that they are searching that search engine for. So for example, we might go on Pinterest and search for something around outdoor kitchens like we were doing earlier on in this, in this certification. And we go out on a couple of different paths. And if at any point we start to realize this isn't what I was looking for, this isn't what I was interested in, we will return back to the hub and enter in new search query information. Same thing on a site like Google Maps. We'll go on to Google Maps, we start to search Google Maps, we'll go down a path, we might end up on a couple of different other sites and then eventually, if we don't feel like we found what we were looking for, we're gonna keep returning back to the hub. Now, in reality, it's a lot more complicated than that. Uh, searchers are going to use different hubs on different screens during multiple sessions to finally track down the thing that they're looking for. Take a look at this one, this is a little more complicated. Somebody might and start out over here on TripAdvisor, go down a path, lose the scent, come back to TripAdvisor, go down a new path, and then eventually find what they're looking for enough that they'll jump to a different hub. Uh, and they might do that on their desktop computer, right? So they started out um, on TripAdvisor. Let's say, for example, you're looking for that bed and breakfast that we talked about earlier. So, Two days later, we end up on our smartphone, we might be standing in line at the grocery store or something like that, and we remember, oh, you know, there was that bed and breakfast that I found on TripAdvisor. So two days later, I'm over here on Google Maps, and I'm in a new search engine, I'm on a new mission, right? I go out, I might end up losing the scent, coming back to Google Maps, and then ultimately finding a little bit more of what I was looking for and connecting the dots a little bit more, getting closer to that conversion. And then 10 days later, I come back to Google and I, this time I might be sitting on the couch watching a football game or something like that, jump on my iPad and ultimately end up booking that bed and breakfast. This is really, um, and this is probably too simple for, for how we actually track down information and uh, ultimately end up converting. Now we'll get more into multiple hubs, multiple search engines, multiple channels, multiple screens and so forth later on in this training. For now I want to focus on how intent and context changes and becomes more clear as that blood, bloodhound continues to search uh, for what it's looking for. Let's take a look at, at something that might happen on Amazon, for example. I go on Amazon, I start down a couple of different trails, I keep losing the scent, I keep dropping back to Amazon, and ultimately I end up buying this radio. So let's think about somebody that has the intent to buy a radio on Amazon. So the first thing that happens is I go out on Amazon, I might go into the search engine, and I type in something like radio. Right, so I go into the search engine, type in something very, very simple, radio. And these are the results that I see. And I'm not satisfied with these results, right? I go down a path and I'm like, eh, that's not really what I was looking for. I typed in radio. Let me go back to the Amazon search engine and refine this query. So in this step, I go up and I say, 
uh, I was really looking for an AM FM radio. I guess I need to be more specific. So I go back to Amazon and I type in AM FM radio and my results change, right? They refined. I've become a little bit more clear about what I'm looking for. And I see these results and I go down and I click on this one and I check that out and I'm not real happy with that either. So I go back again to the hub. I go back into the hub and I type in portable AM FM radio, right? So now I'm like, you know, I wasn't just looking for a radio actually. Now that I think about it, I'm looking for an AM FM radio and really I'm looking for a portable one, right? I'm not looking for a big boom box or something like that. I'm looking for a portable AM FM radio. So I go back into the search engine and I type in something a little bit more specific, portable AM FM radio. And again, my results change. The search engine is becoming more clear about what I'm looking for and I'm getting closer, right? I'm that bloodhound that's got my credit card out, right? I know what I want, I just need to find it. Now, I go back into the search engine because I'm still not happy with, with this portable AM FM radio results and I type in portable AM FM weather radio because really the context and the intent that I had that Amazon never could have known back here when I just typed in radio or AM FM radio was that I really wanted a radio that was portable, that I could get AM and FM news and things like that and I want it to be a weather radio. And so I go back in and I type that into the search engine and finally I say, aha, there's the one I want. Lots of reviews on this guy here. And so this product page is something that I end up clicking on and ultimately end up converting. But this is how people use search engines. They continuously refine and refine until they finally track down what it is they're looking for. Now here's the problem. The problem is that there's a lot more people going on to Amazon and typing in something like radio than there is somebody going into Amazon and typing something like portable AM FM weather radio. Uh, but the question is, is this really a problem? Like we would love for our product inside of Amazon or inside of Google or inside of Yelp our product, our service, or whatever it is that we're selling to rank in the search engine for this big broad term like radio rather than this, this uh, lesser volume search term like portable AM FM radio. But the question is, is this really a problem? And we'll talk about that in the next video when we talk about the tyranny of physical space. We'll see you there.